31 Helicopter Parent Stories According to Reddit Number 31 In the summer of 2014, I hung up on my mom on the phone because I repeatedly told her I had to get off and go to class, and she just kept talking, so I ended the call with an abrupt bye. To punish me, she restricted my phone access so it doesn't work from 11 p.m. to 6 p.m. She is yet to change it back. Well, damn. I hope any emergencies don't occur after 11 p.m. You know what I'm talking about? What a dumbass parent. Number 30. One time I was driving from Colorado to Michigan. Parents thought it took three hours to get from Iowa to Michigan because, well, that's what Google Maps said. When I didn't show up in the expected three hours, they called the Iowa State Police, Illinois State Police, Indiana State Police, Michigan State Police, Lansing Police Department, Grand Rapids Police Department, and our hometown police department to report me missing. Oh, and I was 21 at the time. The first response they got from me was this video. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry. <clears throat> Number 29. My parents had this fucking tracking device activated in my cell phone. All throughout high school, they knew exactly where I was. That is, until I'd leave the damn thing at the place where I told them I was going and go off wherever the fuck I wanted. They were the very definition of helicopter parents. A response reads, My parents had a GPS tracker on my car that monitored rate of acceleration, top speed, average speed, and braking force. This meant that if I hooned my car at all, they'd know. The best part, I drove a RAV4. I sped one time for quite a bit during a road trip, and when asked about it, I lied and claimed I was passing someone. When I got home that night, they had done the math on distance traveled, etc. to prove that I was speeding for an extended period of time. Scary shit. You guys gotta understand, man. Parents ain't got shit else going on in their lives. So where the hell are we really? 31, 30. 29, 28. I was in the school musical. It was my first lead role, and I was singing a duet with the cutest boy in school. True, I was playing his mom, but this was my moment. <laughs> a show Manx was sure to follow. The fire alarm went off. The stage manager signaled us that it was just the fog machine and to keep going. So we did. Cute guy started to get nervous, so I grabbed his hand to give him strength. Imagine Tina Belcher grabbing a zombie Jimmy Pesto Jr.'s butt, and you'll have a pretty good idea of how big a deal this was for me. The audience, of course, is awkwardly leaving because, you know, the fire alarm's going off, and just then, I see a blurry shape out of the corner of my eye. Someone is running towards me. It's a woman, and she's screaming. It's my mother. She runs up to me on stage, rips me away from Jimmy Jr.'s arms, and screams into my face microphone, What are you doing? There's a fire. Get these kids out of here. Who the fuck's in charge here? I was shunned for weeks, and 12 years later, my drama teacher still tells the story to his students. Then... There was the time she called my boss and told him I needed a midday nap because I was too tired. <laughs> I was 22. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure it's only going to get better. Number 27. Not me, but I had an acquaintance whose parents were crazy. That's a nice cover. Mr. Had an acquaintance. Didn't let him watch Spongebob because they don't want the gay spirits in the house. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> Only let him watch TV on Saturdays and Sundays. 
didn't let him drink juice more than twice a week. That's how you get the devil in you. You know what I'm talking about? Showed him a ton of black history documentaries, which for some reason made him hate white people. Well, if they were Spike Lee documentaries, you know what I'm talking about? And you know whose fault that is? The white man. <laughs> didn't vaccinate him? Oh, no. He's lucky to have made it. Didn't let him go to football games or other social gatherings because he was an indigo child. I'm not sure I want to know what that means. If you know what being an indigo child is, or is supposed to mean to people that would, I guess, establish that term for their children, you let me know in the comment section. Didn't let him so. Didn't let him so to the sex ed. Oh, didn't let him go to the sex ed puberty class because they didn't want to give him any ideas. Brilliant. Um, he eventually found out after he masturbated for the first time and he got caught and was grounded for two months and he came to school crying about how his dick would fall off. I felt bad for him. <laughs> oh man, what's this? Like number 26? Not me personally, but I dated a guy in college who had the craziest helicopter parents. As a 20 year old dude, he would not be allowed to leave his condo that they owned. They lived about 30 minutes away and constantly called to make sure he was there. He was literally expected to go directly from class to home every single day. And when he went out for dinner or to the movies, etc., he had to use cash because his parents checked every single purchase on his bank statement and would question him about them. Damn, y'all niggas got nothing to do. He wasn't allowed to drive. So he had to commute by bus to school every day about 45 minutes. One time we went to a summer concert in downtown and his mom called him. He ran out of the concert so he could find a quiet spot to talk to her and then was so scared he made us leave the concert. Oh lord. The reason he put up with all of this was because his parents were paying for everything, the nice condo he lived in, his tuition, etc. He had never worked a day in his life. Not sure what he's doing now, but I'm pretty sure they still have that hold on him. Oh, Jesus Christ, who are these people? My parents paid for my schooling, but the only stipulations were a maintain a respectable GPA. Yeah, yeah, dango. Sorry, I'm moving on here. Number 25. My parents called my trade school when I was fucking 19 years old to make sure I was attending. Okay, they didn't have a reason to suspect that I wasn't going and they weren't the ones paying for it. I moved out very soon after. This wasn't the worst, but it was one of the last. Well, yeah, man. People checking up on my ass. You got me fucked up trying to get all up in that Kool-Aid and don't even know the monkeys. Number 24. One time, my mom was flying and then hit my school and crashed right in front of my airplane friends. Oh, a helicopter parent story. This is stupid. <laughs> Number 23. I was, I was on leave from Iraq, turned 21 during the time period, and my parents still made me home, made me be home by midnight. What? I was a goddamn combat veteran and I needed to be home by midnight. You got the curfew, but I mean, you are living in their house. Holy crap, yes, I was home on leave after my Afghanistan deployment, also 21. Decided against my better judgment to stay um, at my parents instead of a hotel. First night back, I was out late getting fucked up with some friends. And um, at nine, my dad started blowing up my phone, telling me to get home. <laughs> I told him that home was, you know, the fort he was stationed at and that he was on vacation. A gold star. Number 22. My dad used to fling the door open in hopes of catching me doing something I was not supposed to. One time he caught me with a girl's legs over my shoulder, laying pipe like I wasn't like I was getting paid. No blanket or nothing. <laughs> Eye contact was made, dominance assessed, my dad never pulled that shit again. That was the day I brought the chopper down. Okay. Get, he brought the chopper down, that's an interesting...
praise for a helicopter. Oh, here we go. I'm surprised this crap isn't gilded by some guy going, Yeah, I'm, I'll bring the chopper. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I can just imagine the look on your dad's face. I can only imagine. We're just pounding on that bull's head. Number 21. One night I decided to visit my boyfriend at his apartment for some TV time and cuddle. I ended up restarting my phone and forgetting to turn it back on. While cuddling in the front of the television, I fell asleep at around midnight. My mom calls and it goes straight to voicemail. Any logical person would just figure the phone died or that it didn't have service, you know, reasonable where I live, not my mother. She called the cops and tried to report me missing, which ended with the police asking how long I had been gone. She'd responded with, about eight hours and they told her to wait until morning at this point it's about 1 a.m and i'm still asleep we both are fast forward about two hours and my mother has called and woken up all of my friends hunting for me with no luck she calls my best friend and she tells her that i am at my boyfriend's apartment my mother knows now knows that i am safe and not missing this is not enough for her she ends up coming to the apartment after pestering best friend enough for the location. My best friend doesn't know the exact apartment, so she just told her the complex name and went back to bed. I woke up at almost 4 in the morning to my mother banging on the door yelling, you know, her name, open the door. I run thinking something is wrong and fling the door open to find her red. Steam is pouring from her eyes. She yells for me to get in her truck and get home now. The next day, when I went to visit my boyfriend and apologized profusely for what my mother had done, I discovered that my mom had banged on every single door until she found the right one. <laughs> I was 18 at the time. It didn't take much longer before my relationship ended. This is one of the very, very, very many stories about my helicopter mom. Fien. More lore, you say? Is she really? What's a, here's a response to this one. This looks good. My mother freaked out in a similar way when I didn't answer my phone. Not nearly to this magnitude, though. While away at college, my mother decided to call me, and I was at the movies and had my phone off. A normal person would call, get no answer, leave a message, not my mom. I got out of the movie and found that she had left 13 voicemails, all at least a minute long. Jesus Christ. I also had one and one from my father. I like that it's just one from the dad, though. Hey, look, uh, you're probably busy. Call me when you're done. <laughs> she had called him, and she couldn't reach me. Oh, boy. He was being completely normal human, saying, uh, Hey, call your mom when you get the chance. When I called her back, she yelled for several minutes. I asked her finally what she wanted. She just wanted to chat. Which yo, no friend have an ass wondering why nobody want to deal with that. Sorry. Here's a response. When I was a freshman in college... I got a call on my phone at 7.30 a.m. on a Saturday. I'd been out late the night before, and I am not a morning person. Me. Uh, what? Uh -huh. Person on the phone. Who is this? Me. You, you called me. Who are you? Person on the phone. Who is this? Where is Laylee? <laughs> Laylee? No, this is a hobbit feat. Laylee is a friend of mine. After a whole lot more incoherent conversation with the insane person on the phone, only assisted my bleary mumbling and her yelling, um, only assisted by my bleary mumbling and her yelling, I finally ascertained that I was speaking to Laylee's mother. She had tried to call Laylee and had not been able to do so. I definitely pointed out that no sane college student is awake at the crack of dawn on a Saturday morning and that her daughter was probably asleep. Laylee's mom definitely ignored me. So why did you even keep the conversation going? Also, also maybe hung up on me at some point when I was um, not forthcoming enough with her daughter. I learned after that, indeed, Laylee had been asleep. Her mother had called her at seven, gotten no response, decided her daughter was dead in a ditch somewhere, and then pulled out the daughter's cell phone bill and called every single number on it and yelled at all of her daughter's friends all morning. She's gold star. This one wins. This one wins. <laughs> Number 21. When my mom decided I was finally old enough to have a cell phone, and even then I was only allowed to use it for calls, 
She called me basically every hour or two while I was out with friends to check in, and if my phone died, I left the phone off the ringer. She would call my friends' phones repeatedly, or if I was even a little late coming from my school, she would call my friends and ask them if they knew where I was. This would have been at least somewhat understandable if I had been 10 years old, but I was 18. We're going to have to change the title of these to just like crazy mom stories, huh? Oh, and I wasn't allowed to watch anything remotely violent as a kid, so when my friends decided to watch Lord of the Rings at a sleepover, my mom made my dad come over and pick me up because she didn't want me to see that, you know, crazy ass, you know, intensely violent Lord of the Rings. <laughs> my mom is still like this. We'll call one day, maybe five times in an hour. I won't answer it because I'm not trying to talk. So she'll call and text my husband, my dad, my brother. She also won't let me watch R-rated movies. I'm 25, bitch. But I'll still get bitched at about it. Somebody's like, that sounds toxic. With the taste of your lips, I'm on a ride. What am I really going to have to name this video? Am I even recording? No. Yeah. Sometimes I wonder if I even hit the record button. You know what I mean? If I was just talking to myself for an hour. It's never happened. But one of these days, man. One of these days. Is this your first Kyle list and you're surprised that I'm not just reading these corny ass stories in here for your stupid ass pleasure? All I do is talk to myself on these. So if it's your first time, buckled up. Oh, buckle up. Buckle up. Buckle up. I'm sorry. Not really. Let's go to the... <laughs> The 20th one? Man, I'm getting these numbers wrong. I can taste it. Number 20. I didn't go to any school dance or sports event. So yeah, no prom, nothing. I was not allowed to go to the mall by myself when I was 19 years old. My dad would follow me around like he'd walked about five feet behind me. When I was 20, I said I was going to get a cell phone and we got into a big fight with my parents because they didn't want me to have one. I had been working since 15, was going to pay for it myself, etc. Couldn't lock the door to my bedroom or the bathroom, even in my early 20s. Moving out was the best thing ever. I remember when I was 12 or so, my mom and little sister, who was 7 at the time, and I went to Costco to do some shopping. My dad showed up dressed as a clown. He used to dress up for birthday parties, followed me and my little sister around honking his corn horn in my ears, yelling to all the guys that he was our dad <laughs> he still shows up at my work telling co-workers to tell me that daddy is here to see me i'm 31 i think the last time i called him daddy was when seven eight nobody calls him daddy hmm somebody else says we're about the same age i hated parents who were like this and that way with my friends in high school it was so hard to be friends with some people because their parents were so controlling. Have you had a chance to explain your personal boundaries to them? If you have kids, I'm curious about how your parents interact with them and if they've changed with how they treat you. My grandparents still treat my mom, aunts and uncles as if they're kids. It's sad to watch them put up with it. This is honestly some of the biggest and darkest shit that exists in human, you know, relationships is dealing with parents and how they're going to end up dealing with your kids man because i mean the bottom line is half of you probably uh have had upbringings or know your parents well enough to where you know that you if you were to have kids you don't need them anywhere near the response reads my parents treated me like i was a kid until i had my son this august despite the fact that i've been living on my own paying all my bills handling my business for about 10 years now it got really weird this year while pregnant because they started calling me their baby and suddenly forgot that I was their oldest. My mom would tell me about my birth, but it wasn't really my sis but it was really my sister's birth. Interesting. My sister moved to another state years ago to get away from them, and now I see why. And it was just weird, like she didn't exist anymore and I was their only child. My parents decided that they were going to have custody of my son. Once he was born, which is totally delusional, my mother is 90% disabled and can't even sit up by herself, and my dad thinks it's okay to have barbecue fires inside the garage and smoke weed while he drives. 
I had to change my locks because my dad would show up randomly and follow me around the house yelling all sorts of shit while I had company over right before my son was born. I told them that once the baby got here, we are not having any unscheduled visitors. No, we just happened to be in the neighborhood bullshit and I said I don't care if Jesus Christ himself is at the front door, he wouldn't be coming in. Now that my son is here, we go to my parents' house every week or so. My mom will hold him and tell my dad to hold him. And my dad will say, oh, I will later and wander off to watch TV. If he doesn't get to hold the baby before um, we leave, he gets mad. Even if we try to get him to do it the entire time we are there. We will see how things go once my son gets older. They will probably try to indoctrinate him with their crazy religious shit and conspiracy theories. Other than that, weekly visits, I'll try to limit interaction and the stress. Big time. What do you mean they thought they were going to have custody of your child? What you talking about now? Says another visitor. Maybe I, you know, <laughs> made it a little more interesting. The response weeds. Did I say weeds? God damn it. It's a good thing nobody's here to, you know, hear that. Except for you and me, man. And who's going to believe your story? They somehow convinced themselves that this would happen because I am single. The baby's father is my best friend and is very active in his son's life. And they started buying all sorts of baby stuff so that he could live with them. My dad announced their plans by yelling at me at a grocery store. I think I looked at him, said wow, chuckled and walked away. My mom got super butthurt when I told her that my son would not be living with them, started calling him her son, which I put a stop to as soon as I heard it for myself. I realized years ago that my parents were also delusional narcissists who really don't have a clue about how these things work. I'll usually go, uh-huh, right, smile, nod, and walk away. Everything they say or do is taken with a grain of salt, and I limit my time with them. Well, aren't you a level-headed motherfucker in the heat of the night? You know what I'm talking about when we're in the heat of the night? Number 19. Monitored my internet activity and brought up the porn I watched at the dinner table in front of my younger siblings and a friend who was over for dinner and told me watching porn would leave me morally depraved and difficult for anyone to love. I was 13. Hilarious. Don't watch it at the dinner table, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> When else am I supposed to watch it? Nah, don't blame him. He was young. It's a common mistake, you know. Common mistake. Don't look at me that way. It was an honest mistake. Number 18 reads, My parents were in helicopter parents per se. Oh, what did you... Am I going to have to get something to drink here? Give me a second. <laughs> Boy, I am glad nobody heard that. Um, number 18. My parents weren't helicopter parents per se. It was mainly my dad who was really strict only about movies. Good for him. For example, when I was in high school, I asked if I could go to the movies with my friends. It was G.I. Joe. <laughs> Sounds like a movie some fucking turds in high school go check out. A real American here. Are we done with it? No, there's more. That wasn't super... It was some G.I. Joe movie that I wasn't super into, but it was mainly just something to do for fun. My dad said he wouldn't let me glow unless I wrote a paper after the movie um, <laughs> about its redeeming qualities and Christian principles. Um, G.I. Joe was a bad motherfucker. Praise Jesus. What I'm trying to say is, uh, did he go? You know? I wonder if he ended up... <laughs> I'd have been like, no thanks. <laughs> Jeez. Number 17. When I was engaged to my now husband, I was given many long lectures by my parents about how I couldn't lean my head on his shoulder or ever be alone with him because it would lead um, him to have uncontrollable urges, which then lead him to rape me, and it would be my fault for working him up. Those lectures became <laughs> daily. And increased in absurdity. You already know if you if you're in the room and you you touch a teddy bear with him, he's gonna be, he's just gonna pin you on the ground. 
glad my husband was able to stick it out. Things are much better now that I live with him on the other side of the country. You know, a wholesome end where they can, you know, totally engage in their rape play. Um, but it's all fine because there's a safe words and, you know, it's it's all it's all fine. It's all it's all above board, uh, totally consensual stuff, you know people might argue hey man you know can it be classified as rape if there's consent involved but hey man let the people role play what they want to role play so there's a response and it says whoa 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 so your parents told you that men get uncontrollable urges that would lead him to rape and it would be my fault for working him up so not only are you saying that all men are rapists they're victim blaming even before the rape even occurred hell the boners haven't even hardened. Damn. The boners haven't even hardened, ladies and gentlemen. The boners haven't even hardened. Number 17. I work in an emergency room and I get sick and tired of helicopter parents bringing their offspring in for ridiculous reasons. He got a nosebleed a week ago and again today. She's been having foot pain after P.E. Nigga. The worst are the parents that bring their over 18 year old kids into the ER because they went they want them drug tested. I love turning the to the legal adult. Um, and asking, do you consent to this? And the parent normally turns beet red and starts yelling at me about how they are, are the parent and, you know, they pay the insurance, yada, yada, yada. At which point I remind them that their uh, precious child is now an adult with their child's express consent. I cannot perform any tests on them. I've seen more than my fair share of light bulbs go off in the kid's head um, and them flat out refuse all the lab work. I tell them, all right. You heard him. I can't do anything. This normally ends in a call to the hospital administrator that will then tell them the same damn thing. Let me speak to your supervisor. Um, what did they just say? Because I'm going to tell you the same thing. Well, I never. I'm suing this bitch. Mm -hmm. I am also not allowed to give out any information over the phone as I cannot verify who you are as a legal guardian, nor in the room without express pardonation. It's fun to watch people's veins throb when they can't get their way. God forbid, right? That's really all it's about for certain parents is just having control. And, um, come on now. Why don't you become a cop? You know what I mean? If you if you're looking if you're looking for control, grab yourself a badge, you get a gun, go shoot some blacks, you know, you'll be fine, you know? You'll feel like the the great you'll you'll be untouchable too. They'll slap you on the wrist for your crimes. You won't do any jail time, you'll get some paid leave. If you want power, do not have kids. Please God. Please God. There are about a jillion reasons you can Oh, you can choose to not have a child, man. But I feel like using the child as an outlet for your madness as far as exercising control is the worst reason. You ever meet a hoe that's just like um, wanting a baby because she wants to feel needed or loved? It's like she has nothing to live for and nothing going on in her life. So she's like, I need myself a baby. You know what you need is a pet. But instead, uh, you know, they know they, they can find somebody to get between their legs if they spread them wide enough, you know, in a billboard fashion, you know, in some advertising domain. Sorry, my uh, my human terms are are starting to starting to wear off. I'm going to have to jack back into the Internet here and remember how humans talk. Number 16 doesn't sound right, Kyle. My cousin had an interesting freshman year experience. She was roomed with another girl. <gasps> Damn it, Bobby. With another girl with a helicopter parent. And the mother slept in his tiny, the leather slept in this tiny dorm room with the daughter and my cousin for several weeks until she could convince the RA to kick the mother out. Is this real life? With a, with a shit RA. She should have been kicked out as soon as they were notified. The RA was afraid of the confrontation, was hoping the situation could be worked out without her intervention. Pussy ass RAs. You should have brought it up with somebody over their ass and then gotten the RA can. Because if you can't do your fucking job, then why are you taking on responsibilities, you non-confrontational pussy ass bitch? Fuck that. 
I hate people who are have a job and can't do the job, bro. How you have a job and can't do the job, though? Ugh, that must be the Kyle trigger. Ooh, we'll talk about that on the Kyle minute. I should try to figure out the Kyle triggers because that's one of them. That is one of them. This is probably the real number 17, but let's call it 16 for no reason. Throw away, says some guy. Wow, it is a throwaway. Well, would you look at that? Both parents have known to an extent that mental disorders on the top of the whole helicopter thing. Oh my god. They've got mind problems. Illusions of grandeur from mom, delusions and paranoia from dad. That's all good, good. Mom would walk me, a girl, through all the details of brutal rape she could imagine and dazzle it, ugh, and dazzle it up with news stories before going in public anywhere with me or if the subject of men somehow came up. Left me traumatized for a long time not being able to look at boys or men. Looked at porn out of curiosity or something at 10 years old and can't really remember due to the trauma that followed. They found my search history because I didn't know how to delete it safely or, you know, use the internet. And proceeded to interrogate me all night, see the extent to which I was defiled, and who must have been molesting me. There was no one. I was homeschooled and honestly almost threw out names. Whoa. And honestly, almost threw out names or thought up false events. I was beaten on, um, beaten on and off all night until I puked. Still was interrogated as I was told to clean up the puke. I could barely move. I was shaking. And I just felt like I was curling in on myself physically. They accused me of being defensive because I could sit, I couldn't sit upright and normal. I wouldn't, I would sit huddled up. It was struck, my God. I was struck with a belt from the waist to the back of my knees so bad that I had a back, back, oh my God, that I had a blackish welt on my right thigh for a few days. I was told repeatedly by them that this was abuse. Oh God, that this wasn't abuse and I deserved it. They had to because they loved me and made me hug them after everything, then sleep on the couch. I could not be trusted with a room, they said. I was treated worse than a dog for a year as grounding and still had the event referenced as blackmail for years. I was about 18 by the time they stopped really talking about it. At 20, I learned they actually think they may have gone too far and screwed me up mentally. You don't say. This poor, poor girl. Happy conclusion for those who need to hear it. I turned out fine. We still talk though, and I plan to cut ties. Hmm. They're very emotionally dependent and fear that I will leave them. Nigga, they can suck a fuck. I distance myself from them, somehow avoiding drawing attention to them as the abusers. They're the master manipulators, and yes, I've been to raised by narcissists and got myself help by admitting myself to a mental hospital as a teen and continuing to seek help in getting around my entire family to do so. I don't talk about this stuff anymore or really label my family as anything more than crazy. I just want to leave it in the past and define myself by what I do now as an adult. So there's that. <coughs> she seems to have received an overwhelmingly uh, positive amount of it for attention. So hopefully all those people have made him or her, I guess. I don't I don't remember if it was a girl or boy feel better. Blah, 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 blah. But I think it was a girl because, you know, raped by men. She said, yeah, mom would walk me a girl. So there you go. I apologize for me falling apart as far as trying to read that initially. I, it's something about blocky text, man. Something about a big wall of text that will just make my eyes get lost in it. I apologize, but it won't happen again. Number 15. 
My dad followed me into jury duty when I was 21 because he didn't believe I could do it myself. I insisted that he didn't come, but he did anyways. He was stopped by security outside the area and threw a huge fuss about not being able to accompany me. Most of the courtroom was confused and weirded out. Luckily, they didn't need me throughout the trial, so I was dismissed. There's a lot more weird shit my dad does, but this one stood out to me. <laughs> well, uh, man, it's just some some people f hearing the word no when they, you know, they want to have that control just makes them crazy. Number 14, depriving me of the Internet. In grade nine, I was al only allowed to use my laptop in the kitchen to do my homework. My parents blocked Facebook, but I found websites that helped me use Facebook chat. In grade 10, I was allowed to take my laptop to my room, but my dad turned my internet on and off every other hour from 8. Oh, wait, on and off every other hour from 8 in the morning until midnight, okay, at which point it shut off for the night. It was ridiculous because I could never sit down long enough to get any work done before the internet was gone and I had to wait for the next hour. My dad found out about the chat sites I used as a workaround for Facebook and blocked those. I resorted to using Bing Bar's Facebook chat function, which was slow and glitchy. In grade 11 and 12, my internet was shut off at one in the morning and parental controls were removed. I went crazy and watched Netflix and talked to people all the time, which obviously had a negative toll on my grades too long didn't read my parents you made me use bing this is the saddest one in this whole thread man it's never gonna be i should man that's gonna be the um that is going to be <laughs> the thumbnail oh boy so you've probably already seen the thumbnail that's just cruel nobody should have to use bing <laughs> except for porn oh, yes obviously porn. it's the better it's the better porn uh you know so i've been told you know doesn't have any Jesse Green on there, though, so I wouldn't know. I can already hear somebody, you know, getting all pissed about the Jesse Green comments. Suck my... Number 13. A friend of mine growing up, whenever she came next door to hang out, her parents would watch her leave, walk across their lawn, enter my house, and she had to call when she got inside. <laughs> Number 12. Mom read in my diary that I had lost my virginity to my boyfriend of the time, and she called my school's principal to tell him that that person had raped me. Nice, mom. Oh my god, what happened then? Surely you cleared that guy's name, right? X gone, X gone gave it to her. Oh. What? <laughs> okay, Kyle, there's white people watching this, uh, this video. But wait, no, white people watch, uh, watch people, white people watch Rick and Morty. And there was a song where I think there's an episode where Summer and Rick were getting all beefy and buff so they could go beat up that shop owner that was actually the devil. And in that song, in that episode, they played the montage of the song X Gone Give It To You because DMX is a rapper who made a song called X Gone Give It To You in the story. Um, the person re refers to the boyfriend as X, you know, that's the name that they've given the boyfriend. And, uh, somebody said, Hey, did you, did you call the prince, the school to clear X's name? And somebody said, X going, X going gave it to her. You know, shit like this, that makes me lose complete track of where we are. And as far as the list is concerned. So let's just say this is number 11, number 11. When I went away to college, my parents would call me every day. I went away to a fraternity weekend retreat during my freshman year where us pledges weren't supposed to bring our phones. I told my parents that I'm going away three days and not to call me. On the day we were coming back, the guy driving us got a call. He then hands me his phone and tells me to call my parents. It turns out that when my parents couldn't reach me for three days, they came to my college and ran around my dorm and half the campus asking everyone if they'd seen their lost little boy. Uh, I was 18 at the time. On top of that, since I was on their family cell plan, they looked up all the numbers I had recently called and texted and called them. Man, they proceeded to call every one, letting them know that I'm lost and asking if they knew where I was. This included the girls that I had crushes on but barely knew, 
random classmates, and mild acquaintances. When I got back to my worried parents waiting for me in the dorm, I found my cell phone with a bunch of messages of people asking if I'm okay and letting me know my parents are looking for me. For the next day, every one in five people I walked past would ask me if I talked to my parents because they were looking for me. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Enjoy it. Enjoy. That's a gift to you and your social life, you know? One of uh, the more memorable experiences, coming in at number 10, did I really just say that? When I was a freshman, my cousin was a senior, and through him, I made a lot of friends that were upperclassmen. So, at the end of the year, I got invited to prom. My parents made my date, who was just a friend, come over two weeks before the prom and basically asked him every question imaginable. They got his phone number, home number, email, the works. He was super chill about it because my cousin had warned him beforehand. When prom actually came around, I wasn't allowed to ride in the limo with everybody else. Instead, my mom drove me in her ugly ass Astro van that looked like the mystery machine. And she and my siblings and cousins were all packed in there. When we go to the venue, she got off with me and asked an administrator if she could stay. Thank God she said no. <sighs> and I had a curfew, 8.30. It was 7 when I got there. Ugh. Good Lord. Number uh, 9. My buddy had the worst helicopter mom. We were going to college three hours away from his hometown and ended up at a random after-bar party with people we met just that night. His mom showed up, no idea how she found us, walked in, grabbed him by the ear, and dragged him out to her car. She had proceeded to drive him back to our hometown. The next day, she made him get a ride back to the college with his former high school sweetheart he had recently broken up with. She did all this because the mom didn't approve of the breakup. <laughs> Oedipus is real, guys. Oedipus is real. Number 8. Reading these posts makes me appreciate how awesome my parents are. Because fuck me, these are some awesome, awful parents. Well, I guess that's not really number 8, is it? Number 8. <laughs> my mother once drove to my workplace after school when I was 17 to make sure I was actually working. She then freaked out at me because when I got home... Um, she claimed I wasn't there when really she just didn't drive all the way in the parking lot to avoid being seen since she drives such a distinct car. That was around her phase of thinking I was on hardcore drugs and sleeping with the entire male population of my town. I was an A plus student who worked every day after school plus weekends and don't know when she thought I'd have time for all that. Oh no, man, when girls want to bang the flibbies, they make the time. I want to get freaky with you. What number was that? Eight. This is probably like seven or something. This list isn't going to be long at all. I can feel it. Oh no, we're already at 40 minutes. So I can just go ahead and make this longer if I, if I had it in me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would never do something like that, you know? I love you and I value you and your time and I want you to have good days and have something to go to sleep to or you know just have as a distraction if things are getting on your nerves if things are weighing down on you you know dear you bearing some kind of heavy burden you know you always have me to contact and i'll get you through i'll be there sorry um just call my name <laughs> Jesus Christ. Number seven. Finally, an Ask Reddit thread I have a good answer to. I'm still a teenager, so I'll still be putting up with my parents' helicopter habits. My parents were furious when they found out I watched The Hunger Games at a friend's house. Same thing happened whenever I may watch a movie a rated PG or above. And they're not there to fast forward through the kissing scenes and mild cursing. They don't allow me to spend money without telling them first. I once bought a pack of gum without telling them. It, was, it wasn't it was pretty. Long story short, I got my phone taken away for a week after being chewed out for a solid hour. 
damn you bought a piece of gum and then they made you a piece of gum get it because they said that they chewed him out is that the type of lame joke that you're into you guys are the ones who you know i'm not gonna go there all right because i'm not even talking to the majority of people i'm just talking to the couple of people in here who who wouldn't even normally be watching a kyle video you don't know me you don't know me. You, you haven't been in any of my streams. You're the type of person that slides into a stream and it's all like, Hey man, this is my first stream. You see, you're, you're an interesting guy. I gotta ask you though, are you black? You're black, right? Are you black? Man, I don't even know. You know, I think I've seen, where are you living at? You know, you should do voice work, man. You know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this guy. They uh, don't allow me to spend my money. I bought some gum and they made me the chewing gum. My dad has software on my phone that tells him whatever I do on the internet. This includes texting and calling. He'll probably see this, but I don't care. I'd better stop typing now. <laughs> they might catch me. <laughs> I hope your parents see this comments. To the parents of this guy, you are shitty and controlling. Please stop before things get ugly and your son or daughter starts resenting you. Sincerely, the owl of infinite wisdom. Moist Owlet. That's a, f that's a fantastic name. The, uh, the owl of high moistness. Moistness, the moist Owlet. Wow. You know, that was like, um... I was like tickled the other day um, at a Hispanic girl that had a fursona that was a uh, like a little chick, like a baby bird or whatever. And she was like, chica, get it? You know, it's just racist. You know, how are you? I mean, if you're if you are that race, I guess it's fine. Somebody said, I guarantee they won't care. I guarantee they won't care. Well, they'll care in a way where he's getting a uh, flack for it. Yeah, he'll get yelled at for it. That's how they care, you know. We're doing this for your own good because we know exactly what it was like to grow up the way that you're growing up right now because everything the way it is now was exactly the way that it was when I was growing up. God damn it. I know you want to go out with your friends to the sock hops. Go watch that drive-in movie, maybe skate down the blockbuster, pick up some VHS tapes, but it's just not gonna work out the way you want it to, goddammit. So put on these rollerblades and go do something wholesome outside. I don't want to hear about your Pokemon Go no more. Smack that crap out of your hand, boy. With your internets. We're still not at an hour yet, are we? I'm kidding. I'm, let me stop. I'm, not, I'm done. I'm done. I apologize. Almost done. No, I'm done. Number seven. Is this really seven? Let's see. Six, five. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Not the most embarrassing thing, but only one I feel okay sharing. She would constantly go through my phone and read everything when I wasn't around. And I'd found out she was brought up embarrassing information in front of my friend's family and a crush. Once she found my crush on Facebook and messaged him a long ass message that I don't even want to know what it said, all I know is that um, he was super uncomfortable when he asked me if I knew what she, if I knew she had contacted him. As for the worst part about it, I never felt a sense of freedom. I always felt watched. I was never a bad kid, but I felt violated every day. I felt like I never had my own sense of self. Your mom must have been the McAfee antivirus of your life. That's hilarious. Somebody loves this. Oh my god, yes, yeah, she absolutely will. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Can I use that? Stupid. Number two. Killing me in here. <laughs> Hold on, let me get some to drink. I'll mute the microphone. <laughs> like, fuck, I will. Just a little bit of ice crunching for the ASMR seeking people in here. Is that what you want? <laughs> you like that? <laughs> 
I know that you don't like this kind of crap. Um, you know, one guy that would have a big problem in the comment section. Let me know what pisses you off the most about me and my videos when you could be watching anything else if you're so angry. If you're so angry, I'm not forcing you to be here. This is what I don't understand. Number two. I wasn't allowed to hang out with girls when I was younger and one day I was at school park with some of my friends and there was a couple of girls there too. My mom called on me on the phone to ask who I was hanging out with. I only mentioned my guy friends. Well apparently my mom was spying on me with binoculars. The park was just a few blocks from my house. As soon as she saw the girl, she drove to the park, got out and made a big scene about it in front of everyone and made me go home. That probably wasn't even the most embarrassing thing she's put me through. There's been countless other situations. I'm tired of all of these assholes going, well, I'm not going to say the worst one because it'll get back to her. I'm scared of her. I'm scared of her every day of my life. Even now, I'm scared. No, mom, why? You could have made a throwaway account for this shit, people. Jeez. What a fantastic way to stunt the growth of your child's social skills. You're telling me, lol, I was grounded literally for years without being able to do anything besides chores and homework. From ages 12 to 16, I was basically grounded non-stop, with the exception of holidays. I'd come home, do my chores, do my homework, then sit on my bed until bedtime. When you're grounded under my stepdad's roof, you have to sit on the bed in your room until dinner time. Then you go to bed after dinner. No, you cannot lay down. You have to sit upright. By extension, that means no sleeping either. Just sitting on my bed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Some people are monsters. You know what I mean? Like, for real, though. Like, because we live in a world now where it's like, let me just pull out this camera phone and lay down on the bed and say, what are you going to do about it, nigga? You want to be famous? Because I can make you famous right now. You better sit up on that bed when you're on timeout. You sit up. You don't go to sleep. How many hours do you want me to do it, stepdad? You know what I mean? Please let me know, you know. He's not Maria, Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man, let me call. Uh, let me call Stripes for like a, a end of the uh, end of the video special. This is Kyle. Give me a second. I unplugged everything. I don't appreciate the microphone you're using right now, and I'd like you to remedy the situation. Man, stripes can't do anything right. Look, I'm actually okay. Guys, I just muted stripes because we don't have time for this horseshit. I'm just gonna, you know, Sorry. oh, here she is. God damn it. Hello. No, I'm not streaming. I'm finishing up a list, but I thought I might as well. <sighs> thought I was, might as well call you for the last one. The uh, It's pretty much like crazy parent stories. It was supposed yeah. to be uh, 31 helicopter parent stories, but I'm on number one right now. Would you like to hear number one? I'd like to hear number one. Number one. This thread is my life. Up until I left college, my bedtime was nine Every night, I wasn't supposed to be on my phone past 8.30. I wasn't allowed to go outside by myself. Couldn't have friends over after 7 o'clock. Couldn't go to the boys' house until the summer after high school. I had to show my parents my grades every semester to show that I was successful. And I rode the bus until my senior year because he wouldn't take me to get my license until I was 17. He was pretty much told me that I had to attend a certain college because it was X amount of time away from home. Wow. Proximity college. While I'm in college, he makes me show him my grades, check in once a week with three different family members and makes me move home every summer. Now that I'm applying for my master's program and I'm trying to move away, every conversation ends with an argument about me moving away and trying to start my own life. Oh. Well, we there's actually an edit here that gets all, you know, sad. It's all like my parents were divorced. And when my mom died, 
I moved in with my dad and his girlfriend at the age of 10. I should almost put on like some other music for this one. I think you've made the music way um, softer. Oh, yeah. When you cut, get me in the middle of a call and you got something playing, it always mutes. Um, Maybe if I let me start it over. <laughs> yeah, that music's back now. It's kicking. Say something again. I just like. I kind of want to see if he's appreciative about this, because, yeah, they gave him hell when he was growing up. But, like, at, I want to think that it leads to a successful Nah, future. man, nah, man. You never know. No one will ever know um, the effects of, uh... Whoa, here's a cool thing. Urgent message from, from the Weather Channel for those on the path of Hurricane Matthew. I'm Senior Hurricane Specialist Brian Norris, oh, and I'm no. Give me a second. Uh, tell me about it. I'm Shut not up. in the range. Okay. It won't play. God, I'm gonna go to YouTube itself because the freaking app keeps freaking out. This ought to be good. I'm in Florida right now. Hey, can you play this? Would that be would that be acceptable? Is it because yeah. it's too no, I mean hold on. It won't It won't even run. Give me the link. Let me try. Fuck me, right? This old pasty ass looking white motherfucker talking about I'm Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross and I'm if you choose to stay. There will be overwhelming damage and likely a heartbreaking loss of life. Based on everything we know, Matthew will make history. The Weather Channel does not want you to be part of that history. Oh my god, can y'all stop? Tell me what's going on. I can't hear anything. She's saying that this is going to be like the craziest thing in the world right now. Well, you're ready for the end of times, aren't you? Shut the hell up. Is it really gathering strength like that? I'm in Miami, dude. Matthew beginning to spread into East Florida. Tropical storm conditions into East Florida. Potentially catastrophic hurricane strike. Listen to me, I want to know what Hurricane Matthew is going to be like in Miami, son. Thank you. How about that? Was there ever a call for evacuation in Miami? Nigga, the shutters are up. What the hell else am I supposed to do? Hurricane warning for Broward dropped. Maintain for Palm Beach. Broward is way high. Give me a forecast for Miami date, my nigga. Because that's where I'm at, and I should be totally safe. They need to, to pass me with that horse shit. Do you feel me? Let me play my video games in peace. The more northern movement of Matthew today has significantly improved the forecast for Miami-Dade. Much of the interior. There's no live thing. Um, where there has to be. Will there has to be. I apologize. You know, I'm still recording right now. Nobody wants to see this shit. Hey, list is over, they guys. <laughs> they want you to be safe. I want you to be safe. Safety isn't where it's at. You you want me to be safe long enough, and I'll I'll be I'll think that it's lame and just go outside, my arms outspread. Make it happen. What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> I love that phrase. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Oh Wait. man, what happened? I think you just finished the list too. No, I really do need to finish the list. So, um, no, guys, no. I hope you enjoyed this list. And this is my douchebag schmuck voice, Wait, you know. Just... Sometimes I get on IMA's back for watching that Rob Dyke cunt, and his, all his videos are all like, in the world, so the and I'm I'm beginning to feel like. Even though this is my voice that I guess I inflect in weird ways. Oh no, you definitely have inflection and I wish I could mimic it so you can hear. I'm sure you know of it though. You listen to your voice often enough to know. Listen to that water and this is an area, Lake Worth, Florida, just north of West Palm Beach. Where the hell was that coming from? Very serious storm surge. That storm what? surge is going to be... No, there was just like... <laughs> okay, okay, look. Um... Nah, nigga, look. This is Miami down here. You understand me? Yeah. So I'm not gonna die down in the the okay area, okay? Everybody up here, that hurricane's gonna be all like, check me out, man. You know what the cool thing about Matthew's gonna be is that it's what? gonna go out, right, and then try to come back again. You know what I'm talking about? 
round I thought you said, two. What? I thought you said you heard it came front with all the shingles. Shingles. Let's type that in. Shingles to the internet. Shingles, herpes, zoster. You know? So shingles is a reactivation of the chicken pox virus in the body, causing a painful rash. Shingles. Shingles. I put up the shingles. <laughs> you know? The hurricane's going to come. It's going to be like, oh, no, I don't want shingles. It's going to leave. <laughs> It's going to put on its hat. It's going to pack its suitcase. And it's going to say, I got to get out of here. This is what we were waiting for. Thanks for taking like eight minutes to establish the comedy stylings of, of Stripes as usual. What the hell? Well, see you guys later. Get <laughs> you